if you want to get rid of it. Hello, I'm Sue, and this is going to be part two of instrument drawing an instrument survey map. Uh, one one to continue with is drawing the house, dimensioning the house, labeling how many stories it is, putting the word garage over here where this this represents an asphalt driveway. And uh, so again, as in the previous one, the surveyors went out and gave me these point shots for the house. Now they also provided me with something called a field sketch. And so I wanted to show you what that field sketch looks like. We're gonna use it to build the information of this back corner of this house. So the first lines that, they, that we already have in the drawing are is along here, this 29.9, this four, and 37.57 and 26.55, but we do not have this back right corner drawn. So we're going to make note of 67.51 and 30.42. And you're going to probably find out that I'm going to have to come back here a couple times to see this. All right. So the way I usually do it is I use two intersecting circles. So I'll issue a circle command and come from the endpoints. So I'm going to use the circle command from the ribbon and the endpoint is already being recognized. And I'm going to come here and we're going to already go back and refer to the field sketch 67.51. Oops. I'm going to type in 67.51 and then we're going to go back and look at that field sketch again, 30.42. So those points where those two circles intersect is where we're going to draw that property corner. And I'm just going to make sure that I am set to the current layer which is this blue line, which should put on EX-B building. And I'm just going to issue, you can do it with a polyline, or you can just do it with a plain line. I'm okay with a plain line. Draw from endpoint to intersection, down here to the endpoint. And you're already done. So those I just considered construction circles. We can just go ahead and erase those. Our next command is to dimension the house. So I normally dimension um, using 0 0.0 text size on a layer called ex-building. I actually don't have that defined over here in this block. So I'm just gonna copy over a 0 0.08 piece of text here. It is on the correct layer, which is ex-building.text. You come down here and you see that it's 30 scale. And the text height says it's 0 0.08. Our, my dimensions in the instrument surveys where I work is using 0 0.06 text size. It's the smallest text that we use in the drawing. So I'm just going to change that to read 0 0.06. And if I can hit backspace here and hit enter. I'm just going to drag this up a little. Again, this is nothing more than this is a pile line, so you can do a distance command and find out from endpoint to endpoint what that distance is. And one thing that we do is a, you can see, um, it's not defined here, but I only go to one decimal place, and that showed me 37.56, which I can copy up here and I can paste it. But I'm only going to one decimal place, so I'm just going to round that up to six and add the a foot dimension to the back of that. And then I'm just going to copy this. To like the midpoint here. And see how that says east? This also would say um, zero if you had it on anything other than surveyor's units. 
but um, I'm just going to type in north, which is nothing more than saying 90 degrees. Um, I guess the, I don't really care if you keep this as a polyline, so I'm going to um, just explode it. I think one of the easiest things to do is just to list it, the line itself and grab it from the properties dialog box. So um, there's no rounding up on this one. I'm just going to grab the first three spots. And paste. And I'm just going to do that for the remainder of these lines. One thing, if I grip, I think I showed you this in the last time, is that I can kind of really judge where the midpoint of that line is. I'm going to grab this one, 67.5. I don't need the last part. Because uh, the surveyors went out and did define um, those first lines, except for this um, ones that I'm labeling right, the surveyors defined this line, this line, this line, and this line by points, survey points. So no matter what their field sketch says, I'm going with the numbers that the computers generated and, and are showing me. These lines I'm trying to keep the one without the survey line or the survey point, I'm going to keep trying to do my best to keep it to what the survey field sketch says. In this case, 67.5 and 30.4. And we built those very specifically using those circles. Probably turn that off and come down here and adjust a little bit. What's this? And this one's going to require some rounding, so I'm just going to grab it all. That would become 29.9. We only got one more to do. I'm bouncing back and forth between using ribbon and using the, the letter CO for copy. Um, this one I'm not going to be able to center perfectly, so I'm okay with just kind of offsetting a little bit and letting it, let it hang. It's 3.98, so we're, at this point you, you've got to basically type all the numbers. It's just going to become 4.0. Okay, so you're done labeling the dimensions of the house. And now we're going to go back to that field sketch. And um, they're telling me that it's a one story frame house. I can assume this is the garage because that's where the asphalt driveway is leading to. So we're going to come over here. I've got a label for asphalt driveway. I'm just going to drag it over to the center of here. And that's one step. Um, so we're going to start detailing what this is. So this is a one story frame house. I'm going to try to get it kind of centered between, kind of centering it between this 26.5 and 37.6. Just to, and also, so if we went back to our project folder here. I can see that the house is number 157. Everything I have reportedly for my job that I started is calling is house number 157. You can see that in a couple places. Um, when I start a project, we download the what's called the Landmax report. So if I click on that, I'm seeing things like the street address 
this 157 Fairfield Drive. Um, this appearance considered the tax account, account number. We'll be covering where this information gets inserted a lot. So there's a lot of information on this sheet that gets reported in our finalized map. We'll talk more about that as we go along. So what I'm trying to get at is that we're just going to highlight this thing here and we're going to call it 157. Um, the surveyors did not tell me this was a garage, but we can go ahead and assume that it is. So we're going to go find the garage label. I had a separate garage label. Huh. Anyways, I don't need to define the garage. I'm just going to back, I'm just going to erase. Just trying to say the word garage. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I also, my boss likes to hatch the driveway. So I got this um, hatch built into this block or this area over here that I use for, I call this my work faster block. It's already here and exploded for you. So make use of it. So this is the hatching for the driveway. I kind of drag it over to the middle of the driveway. And this is a nice driveway. In fact, I only have four points. So I'm going to turn on the ortho and use the grips, get it to the end points of that, and simply hitch that. And that looks pretty good. And I uh, think we can do one more thing. So um, before the end of this lesson, if we go back to how this finally looks, one thing that's very important in the drawing that we're defining to the boundary is that we're saying exactly the whole purpose of this map is to define exactly where um, where this sits on the parcel. So I'm saying that the left side of the house is 19.3 is feet exactly away from the calculated boundary. Over here is 14.6 and 42. I'm always doing three of these dimensions in the drawing. So the way that we do that is I set to a layer called a uh, swing. And let's see, one of these over here is, um, actually I don't think it's defined over there. So I'm just gonna set to the layer called swing. It's considered a swing tie. I'm going to go double check my dimension style. So I'm typing in DB dim enter. And it says Lantech uh, 0 0.08 aligned, which is perfect. So we're going to make sure that this says set cur current and close. And basically, you're just doing nothing more than an aligned dimension. So you're going to dim aligned. And you're coming from endpoint to perpendicular. And you're going to set it right at that corner. So you're going to O snap to that endpoint there. And just going to hit enter. Now, in my business, um, a lot of times in a lot of different uh, job types, they would keep that all as one piece. But I'm consistently moving stuff around so instead of just having um having to explode it uh i hit i maintain a dim associative of zero so if i typed in dim associate you'll see that it set at zero which means nothing more than these things are all pieces not together and you're going to find out why right now when i do this one to the right so let's go back to our dim aligned Endpoint to perpendicular, always perpendicular to the boundary, and set it at that endpoint and hit enter. Um, I don't really like this style, so I like I like to force the piece of text to be. Uh, what I do is I at this point don't like the way that that came out, so I'm going to move both 
these two pieces from endpoint to endpoint here. And then I'm going to move this from endpoint to endpoint and issue a break command to get that from stop stopping to touch the text. And that looks a lot better to me. And that's the way I want that to look. And we're going to do one more. We always issue three of these, left, right, and to the front. So um, we're just trying to pick the point that's closest. And I'm trying to get to perpendicular. And I just picked that endpoint there. That came out looking really good. Maybe we got time to do one more function. Um, in my commands, um, let's see where we're going to see it. Okay, not there. All right, we have some more. We have some more uh, stuff that comes with us. So every property has a deed. It's recorded at the county clerk's office, and in, in this file, so all our jobs have uh, deed references, and our, we call it just deed to read. And this, you can see, this is kind of old school. Um, the recording number is eight two two six six three one. They're currently up into the 12,000s, so you can see this is kind of an older one. So we're looking for something called the property description within this thing. Um, so if you see this, it starts off, it might be multiple pages. Usually they're about three pages. In this case, it's two, so I know I'm going to find the property description on the second page. And I'm just going to blow up here. And so we start reading here. That's going to say everything that we need to know in this first paragraph. It says, uh, County Clerk's Office, Library 145 of Maps at page 89, which is that original old map that we looked at. That was this number assigned to it. And the saying that it is lot number one. You can see that in a couple different places in our documentation. We can also see that on what's called the tax map. So this is a tax map. It defines all the parcels. Um, in a certain area. Um, in this case, we have highlighted um, where our parcel is located. If I blow up on it, start getting a little closer. Uh, you can start seeing that um, the, here's our lot one. And uh, here's our dimensions, again, that we used to label the boundary. And it's already defining to us the name of the subdivision, Fairfield Acre Subdivision. It's actually also saying that old map number that we've been referencing to, which is 145 and 89. So you can see we can see this stuff in multiple different locations, and it all gets utilized within the finalized map. So let's just go ahead and label our parcel, parcel one. And then we'll call it a day, or call it a, the end of a the session for number two. So let's just drag this over to the middle and edit that to be lot one. And let's save our drawing. And that will end session or number two.